Early in the 20th century, these motion pictures of the great white fleet of the United States Navy were seen throughout the world. Here, years earlier, President Theodore Roosevelt comes aboard the Kearsarge. Roosevelt's personality became familiar around the world with the help of the motion picture. Motion pictures such as these of the first race for the Vanderbilt Cup were exciting novelties in 1903. Only a handful of years earlier, motion in pictures was only a dream. This film will describe some of the events leading to the perfection of motion pictures. Down through the ages, man has sought to record his deeds and his actions in art. First, on the walls of his cave dwellings. Later, in relief, on the walls of his temple. Although man could record the impression of motion in his art, he could not reproduce motion for the unimaginative spectator. In fact, only an artist could record pictures at all. The Florentine genius, Leonardo da Vinci, whose Mona Lisa alone immortalized his name in the arts, documented the phenomenon of the camera obscura, a dark room in which anyone could trace the outlines of nature. The camera obscura, the basic instrument of all photography, was used as early as the 11th century by the Arabian astronomer Al-Hassan, who employed it in the study of eclipses. Giovanni della Porta, a 16th century Neapolitan writer, entertained guests with natural magic, as he called his application of the camera obscura. In a way, he was the first projectionist. However, that title may belong to Athanasius Kircher, a 17th century German priest and scientist, who developed this catoptrican theater, a theater of mirrors, using sunlight to reflect pictures on a wall. Kircher's book, Ars Magna, Lucis et Umbre, or The Great Art of Light and Shadow, was published in 1640, and again in this edition of 1671. In it are several illustrations of what he called magic lanterns. Historians differ as to whose magic lantern came first, but Christian Huygens, a Dutch physicist made his in 1656. Here was a means of projecting drawings on a wall for many people to view at once. Magic lanterns were made in many forms and for many uses. This is Johann Zahn's device, a clock. This one is a wind indicator connected to a vane on the roof. As though in prelude to the perfection of motion pictures, Peter Marc Roger, an Englishman famed for his thesaurus of English words and phrases, read a paper in this room before the Royal Society of London on Christmas Eve, 1824. His subject was the persistence of vision with regard to moving objects. But it was Dr. John Ayrton Paris, a year or so later, who demonstrated the theory graphically with his toy he called the thaumatrope, or wonder-turner. Persistence of vision made the images on both sides of a card appear as one. In 1829, the Belgian scientist Joseph Plateau developed a machine which caused a deformed image to look normal when viewed through a spinning disc or shutter.
Plateau continued experimenting, and four years later presented this device, the Phenakistoscope. Almost simultaneously, an Austrian geometrician, von Stumpfer, presented a similar device, the stroboscope. They came to be known as Plateau Stumpfer magic discs, and with changeable picture wheels, gained favor as parlor entertainment. Employing the same principles, the zoetrope rose to popularity, and artists drew action strips by the hundred so the viewer could change pictures at will. A refinement of the zoetrope idea was the praxinoscope, developed by the Frenchman Charles Reynaud. An Austrian artillery and ballistics expert, Baron General Franz von Ukatius, devised this magic lantern, which used a variation of the Plateau Stompfer magic discs, rotating a glass disc behind an aperture in shutter to produce the first motion pictures projected on a screen. Meanwhile, Louis Daguerre perfected a process he and Joseph Niepce had developed a method of recording a picture by chemical action on a metal plate, the daguerreotype. Another process of the same era was the calotype or Talbot type. The paper negative at left, used to make a positive print, was developed by William Henry Fox Talbot in England. Coming closer to the needs of the motion picture, the Langenheim brothers of Philadelphia made positive prints on glass plates making projection of photographs possible. It is significant to mention that by 1870, men knew of persistence of vision. They had a variety of apparatus for projection, and they had transparent photographs of quality. All that was lacking was motion. Leland Stanford, the former governor of California, had a large farm and an interest in the way artists were depicting the gates of horses. About the horse in motion, he engaged the San Francisco photographer, Edward Mybridge, who came to the farm in 1872. Mybridge made many pictures in the next few years, but they were inconclusive. Stanford then brought a railroad engineer named John Isaacs to the farm to help explore the idea of using several cameras instead of only one or two. Mybridge and Isaac set up a series of 24 cameras whose electric shutters were tripped when threads were broken by the horse as it ran past the cameras. Each camera made an exposure of one two thousandth of a second. The cameras were so spaced that only one twenty-fifth of a second separated the exposures. In 1880, Mybridge devised this projector similar to the Eucatius machine, and dubbed it the Zopraxiscope. With it, he showed his pictures to the San Francisco Art Association, the first exhibition before an audience of projected photographic motion pictures. Mybridge's exhibition caused a sensation in the press. He showed his pictures all over the United States and in the following year took them to France where he showed them to the physiologist Etienne Jules Moray, a pioneer in the study of animal locomotion and photography in this so-called physiological park where Moray used many instruments in his studies he saw the need for a single camera which would photograph separate pictures in quick succession. He developed this photographic gun which made 12 pictures on a glass plate. This was approaching the solution. Back in the United States, in this New Jersey laboratory, Thomas Alva Edison, America's greatest problem solver, had perfected the talking phonograph. Edison realized its entertainment potential 
but he developed it for use as a recorder of court proceedings and for dictating business letters. These are Edison's own words. The idea occurred to me that it was possible to devise an instrument which should do for the eye what the phonograph does for the ear, and that by a combination of the two, all motion and sound could be recorded and reproduced simultaneously. Thinking along these lines, Edison first developed a machine resembling the phonograph. Photographic paper wound on this cylinder made pictures through a microscope-like eyepiece as the cylinder revolved and moved laterally along a worm gear. Images were extremely tiny and much too grainy to please Edison. So he increased the size of the image and the diameter of the cylinder. This machine is incomplete, but you can see that each of these teeth, when it touched this flexible plate, could close a contact and illuminate each picture for an instant, giving the intermittent view required to take advantage of the law of persistence of vision. Edison discarded the cylinder idea in favor of using a strip of flexible transparent material on which a photosensitive emulsion could be affixed so pictures could be exposed one after another. To assure registration of the pictures, he conceived the idea of perforating the film, permitting it to be advanced by sprockets. This is the perforator he used. Several types of celluloid proved unsatisfactory. Then Edison bought a piece of newly developed nitrocellulose roll film from George Eastman of Rochester, who had perfected it for his Kodak camera. Eastman's film solved Edison's film problem. In this crude wooden cabinet is the actual machine built by Edison in 1889 to use the roll film. This is the strip kinetograph designed to take motion pictures and to project the same pictures on a screen. The electric motor drives the film advancement mechanism. Note the governor to ensure constant speed. The shutter interrupts the light passing through the lens while the film is being advanced. As a camera, a picture is exposed while each hole in the shutter is in front of the lens and while the film is at rest behind the aperture. As a projector, a light source is added behind the picture aperture and the picture is sent back out through the lens, through a hole in the shutter and onto a screen. A separate motor drives the film takeoff mechanism. Here is the negative of one of those films. Notice that the images are exposed horizontally along the film. The circular aperture and the sprocket holes along one edge. Watch this 1889 motion picture. Edison put together $600 worth of wood and tar paper to make this kinetographic theater, promptly renamed by its workers, the Black Mariah. After a few improvements, it looked like this. This is a scale model. The entire building revolved on wheels, for Edison had installed a much larger kinetograph, and everything had to be brought to the camera, including the sun's rays, admitted by adjusting the panels in the roof. William K. L. Dixon, one of Edison's principal assistants, said, we find that the contrasts are affected by the total exclusion of light from the lower end of the hall heightened by draperies of impenetrable black, against which stands out in sharp relief the central stage, on which are placed the kinetographic subjects, bathed in the full power of the solar rays pouring down from the movable roof. The original sound is lost, but here is one of the first sound motion pictures ever made. Short films such as this were made by the dozen for use in the Edison kinetoscope, popularly called the peep show. Formed into a continuous loop, 
The film ran for about a minute. Some were sound pictures, incorporating the phonograph. Here is the first copyrighted motion picture. Gesundheit. Knowing the Library of Congress accepted photographs for copyright, Edison exposed all the frames of this short film onto a piece of photographic paper and mailed it in to the Copyright Office with the necessary 50 cents. Started by Edison in 1894, this procedure became the accepted method of copywriting motion pictures until later, when entire films were printed on paper rolls, each roll being copyrighted as a single photograph. The American Motion Picture Theater is popularly dated from April 23, 1896, when motion pictures were shown as part of a program at a Broadway theater Coster and Beale's Music Hall. Motion pictures had been achieved. The projector was the vitoscope built by Edison from the design of Thomas Armott of Washington, D.C. Almost simultaneously, cameras and projectors were invented in the United States and abroad. This is the Jenkins camera, capable of 3,200 pictures per second. This is Levison's camera, it used separate glass plates. This spiral camera projector came from the Chicago Recording Scale Company. This is the Lumiere Cinematograph camera projector from France. From England came the Damony Gaumont camera projector. This bulky American mutograph camera was set up by its crew all over the world to make pictures for the mutoscope. Designed to compete with the Edison Kinetoscope peep show, this model permits several persons to watch. Photographs on cards attached to the rotating wheel give the impression of continuous motion. This 1897 picture shows Pope Leo XIII in Rome. One of the mutograph partners and a former Edison assistant, W.K.L. Dixon, wrote in Century Magazine in 1894, no scene, however animated and extensive, but will eventually be within reproductive power. This newsreel shows American troops landing in Cuba. And here, the Marines from the USS Brooklyn are returning from the war. This 1897 film might have been the first military training film. The Gatling gun, firing procedures. These motion pictures of America's first submarine, the USS Holland, made in 1903, served to document naval history. These have been the origins, not all of them, of the motion picture, a toy which grew to become a world force for the dissemination of knowledge and the cultivation of understanding. <laughs>